Um, I'm Gary Hollander, President and CEO of Diverse and Resilient. We are, I used to say we're a microscopic LGBT organization in Wisconsin, but we're actually Wisconsin's largest lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender organization. It doesn't mean that we've gotten all that much bigger, it just means there's that much more money to collect. Um, I'm uh, going to have two functions uh, right now. One of them is to do a very short presentation on acceptance journeys, a project that we're doing and I hope that many of you will get involved with and take home with you. Uh, and then uh, also I have the privilege of then introducing our former Lieutenant Governor Barbara Lawton. Um, acceptance Journeys is a project that we began a couple of years ago. It's an effort on our part to address anti-gay discrimination as one of the things that contributes to the health inequities uh, that are experienced by lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people in Wisconsin. We call it a, uh, an effort to reduce anti-gay discrimination rather than homophobia because when we tested the notion of homophobia, not only don't people know that they are homophobic, they don't even know that there is that word. It is not a word that is understood by many people outside this room. Um, we have many program partners in this project. Uh, in addition to me and our agency, and there are several people who are working on it, our lead coordinator in this project was Kofi Short. And Kofi is right here. So Kofi, would you stand? This is what he looks like. Very handsome. We also <clears throat> work with Shanika Hull, who is a fellow at the University of Wisconsin School of Journalism and Mass Communication, Luis Garcia, who's with the Medical College, Mari Gassiorowitz, and Annika Moore from the Department of Health Services, uh, William Jeffries from the Centers for Disease Control, and we also get uh, funding from Mac AIDS Fund uh, and Aviva Lip Glam, I'm all about it, 1495. Every single cent from that project goes to um, projects like the one you're going to see right now. They don't take any profit from it. Um, and Lady Gaga used to be the spokesperson, so to her. Um, uh, so when this project started, what we looked at was really uh, based all in this slide. And what we noticed is that over a 10-year period from 2001 through 2010, you can see that the relative proportion of new cases of HIV in Wisconsin among white and Latino folks, uh, youth between the ages of, uh, under the age of 30, remained relatively flat. Uh, ideally, that line would have no people in it, uh, but, but there are persistent uh, um, ca new cases coming in each year. But you'll notice among young African American, gay and bisexual men, it increased significantly over that time, 148% to be uh, exact. Um, and when you, want, when you look at it this way, what you'll see is that among young men who have sex with men, um, the 30% the of the population of young African American gay and bisexual men have HIV disease. That's one in three, 30%. And it's less than 1% of any other population, 30 times any other group. Uh, three times the number for uh, Latino gay and bisexual men, and uh, seven times the number of for, or six times the number of for white gay and bisexual men. Um, to think about there being uh, one in five white young gay men having HIV disease, one, you know, one in 20 rather, is incredible. Uh, to have it be one in 10 for every young uh, Latino uh, is uh, uh, you know incredible and unacceptable, but one in three um, is really horrific. And so what we decided to do was um, examine a bit about where this might be coming from. And so when we looked at anti-gay discrimination, we found out that anti-gay discrimination or homophobia was making a context in which people couldn't live, couldn't live well. Their housing was unstable. Many times they were kicked out of their homes. There was a huge amount of stigma about being gay and about possibly having HIV. Receiving insufficient school sexuality education, for example, in Milwaukee Public Schools until a couple of years ago, um, school sexuality education meant teen pregnancy prevention and nothing else. Uh, highest degrees of internalized homophobia, a lot of social exclusion, teasing, and so forth. And you'll notice here that we do not include bullying. Bullying is one very specific type of social exclusion, but there's a lot of other things that are going on. 
And in some ways, I think, when we put all of our eggs in the bullying basket, even though I agree it's an incredibly important factor, but when we put all of them in it, what happens is we deny that that same kind of stuff is happening in homes, the same kind of stuff is happening in neighborhoods, the same sort of thing is happening in religious communities, except it's happening at the hands of adults. Um, and then what happens then is that in this uh, unfavorable social condition, young people are making uh, poor decisions, uh, they're engaging in unsafe sexual behaviors. Uh, they lack information to keep themselves safe. They're doing a lot of escapist coping. I love doing this to all adult audience, and they go, escapist coping? And I said, yeah, I heard you say later on you're going for a glass of wine after this, like that. Um, and a fair degree of, uh, of resignation and hopelessness. And that sets up the circumstance then when there's going to be an HIV transmission. So we decided to develop this program, um, and I can tell you in a longer period of time, and I think Kofi shared this with people who were in a breakout group earlier, that um, we decided that we needed to look at where people are in their journey. And, uh, oh my gosh, there's Chris Allen right there whose picture this is. Uh, and uh, he's here with his uh, cousin Melanie. And uh, Melanie tells a story of how um, she learned of Chris being gay, he told her about it, and her response, now tell me that you wouldn't love this to be your cousin. Um, she said, well, we need to find out about that. Let's go to San Francisco. <laughs> I'm perplexed by that. I mean, I just like, I so want Melanie to be in my family. Um, so then we had other stories, like this one is of um, Miracle and her uncle Ronnie, and uh, Miracle talks about how he's been her dad. Um, this is a, a, oh yes, yes, this is, and here's Miracle's story, okay. Sorry. This is what our office looks like all the time. Oh, Gary, you forgot. To... All right, we're almost here. Here we go. Here's a radio spot with Miracle's voice. Playing. Sound, sound guy, he's not there. Okay. So you can link arms and sing feelings. Sound guy? I'm having a few. Okay, well, we'll come back. Um, and uh, this, is, uh, this is Denora, Maria, and Raul, who are customers of Zeferino and, and his restaurant. And uh, they're all immigrants uh, to this country and, uh, and shared a sense of solidarity in their immigrant status. And because of that immigrant status, uh, Denora, Maria, and Raul all encouraged Zeferino to uh, come out. And uh, this is the story of their friendship. Uh, this is uh, Pastor Wheeler and one of his parishioners, Brian, and uh, Pastor Wheeler is the African-American man standing there uh, in a Lutheran church, and um, he tells his story about understanding how he had to unpack and dismantle his anti-gay discrimination. So we started to develop these stories, listening to people about what was going on in their lives and their stories of acceptance, and if you um, heard earlier in uh, in our um, presentation by Dorothy about how um, it's like, what do we do about building social skills in communities where there's a lot of bullying or a lot of anti-gay discrimination? Uh, our answer to that is find the people who aren't in that, involved in that and have them, give them a voice. Clearly people who have those feelings of anti-gay discrimination have their voice. Let's give the rest of us a voice. Um, but what we found also is that there were a lot of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people who were very fearful about rocking the boat. And so we have another campaign called Imagine More, and in this campaign, uh, we talk about the journey for LGBT people as well, and these are a series of, um, of newspaper ads uh, that appear in Milwaukee. When we think about bullying and anti-gay discrimination at those most virulent levels, what we're really talking about is rejection. But, you know, the point is that after rejection is avoidance, and after avoidance is tolerance. And I think it's really important that in a country that really aims at tolerance, we're aiming way too low to have a good life. Um, if, I, if I said to any one of you, I could put up with having lunch with you, would you like to go? I mean, how's that going for you? I mean, it's just not gonna go anywhere, is it? 
And yet, I think it's what we aim for. And so this project is really aiming higher than that. It's aiming for acceptance. And when we're at acceptance, um, LGBT people would feel that they would get support in accessing their rights, and they would be embraced for who they are. And that's really where we need to aim. And so we ask people uh, who we work with in this project to aim higher. So we have this program uh, that involves uh, LGBT uh, relative, I mean, relatives of LGBT people, their friends and so forth. Um, we have programs uh, for uh, LGBT people, but we're now looking to bring this same uh, message to everyone. And here's a good point. Oh, and there's Kofi in the middle of this picture with his beautiful family. Whose life could you change with love? There has never been a time when my Uncle Ronnie wasn't there. I never had a father in my life, and he was always there for me. He's really supportive, he's really dependable, and he just gives out this positive energy to the people he meets. When I asked him if he was gay, and he said he was, I said, no matter what, you'll still be my uncle, and I love you with all my heart. He's a great role model, and he's encouraged me to pursue my dreams to become a pediatrician when I'm older. I'm in a school now where there are a lot of LGBT kids. I have really good relationships with them because I trust them. And most of the time, they don't judge me or others. We should all just be comfortable with each other and accept each other. I'm lucky to have these gay friends in my life. Whose life could you change with love? To learn more, visit our website at journeytoaccept.org or join us at facebook.com slash acceptance journey. Acceptance Journeys is a project of Diverse and Resilient and the City of Milwaukee. It is funded in part through a generous gift from the Mac AIDS Fund. Yeah. So there are four of those radio ads. Uh, one's playing right now, and there are, um, they're played 240 times a week um, on uh, Latino and black uh, radio stations here in Milwaukee. Um, we also have billboards in Milwaukee, General Mitchell Field and the Concourse. Um, we have 50 billboards in the central city south and north. Uh, you see one at the top there, we're not the smile one. Um, uh, and we have 55 Bus King ads. It's called a Bus King because of the size of the ad, not, not because we call him Chris, Chris the King or anything. Um, and we also have, uh, have a, fa a um, web page, and the new web page will be launched in, I think, one week. And uh, we, are, of course, are on Facebook as well. We're going to be developing 30 additional cards, uh, 10 with youth. So any of you who are under the age of 24 and live in uh, Milwaukee, we'd love to talk to you. Um, we're also expanding our dissemination strategy. So in addition to our radio spots, we're also doing uh, programs with uh, non-governmental organizations and faith-based organizations. We recently had uh, an event that celebrated Bayard Rustin's birthday, uh, had 130 or 40 people there for that celebration and featured acceptance journeys. We're also exploring um, helping LGBT people have healthy relationship uh, training, and we're not talking about necessarily, relation, although it includes relationships with one another, it's also expecting more from the heterosexual people in our lives and have having healthier relationships with them. I'm very, you notice I have not said the word ally. We don't use that word because we think it has to be earned and it's not just a title and people can be an ally and then reach a point and then back off from it. So we really want to simply talk about the relationships and constantly have higher expectations of our relationships. We're expanding our social marketing and we're also continuing a great deal of formative and summative evaluation, which we're doing in Milwaukee, uh, St. Louis, and I think Cleveland? Cleveland, all right, thank you. Um, so what's next for you in this? Um, well, we'd really like to encourage everyone here to imagine more and expect more. Imagine um, all the things that could be different if anti-gay oppression were really gone, really gone. Um, and we'd like to have people get conversations going about acceptance and what acceptance really would look like. Um, there, are, there have been, and I think there are still maybe some acceptance journey card packs there, and if there are not any uh, out at the uh, materials table, please uh, see me or Kofi and we'll get you some. 
Um, we really would like, uh, actually for you as well, to know some consequences of the lack of acceptance. And the lack of acceptance contributes not only to mental health issues like depression and anxiety, it also contributes to suicidal thoughts, uh, it contributes to uh, partner violence, community violence, it contributes to tobacco use and alcohol and drug use. If you are uh, in Milwaukee, let us know if you're interested in sharing your story. So, I'm not good at doing this stuff, but I love this slide. This is what it looks like. It's really great to see acceptance, isn't it? So I have the privilege of introducing Lieutenant Governor Barbara Lawton, former. Um, <laughs> Uh, Barbara imbued that office with a level of determination and candor and engagement that really sets the bar for years to come. Her coaching of other people has helped young women and men launch their professional lives. Her interactions with young interns and aides is exemplar and many, many people could, um, you know, take a lesson from her. Oh, that were she in office still. If you want to find out <laughs> if you want to find out more about Barbara and there is a considerable amount to learn, I encourage you to Google Barbara Lawton and you're going to find a wealth of examples of courage, right-mindedness and scrappiness. <laughs> 